Before life and death, before light and darkness, there was nothing, a void of emptiness, vast and expansive, yet vacant of any sentience. The name of this void was Chaos. She is the oldest and most primal of gods to exist in Greek mythology. From her, whether it was through her own creation or merely a byproduct of her awakening, from the void sprung Gaia, the Earth, Tartarus, the Underworld, and Eros, the manifestation of love. As love had taken shape and been conceptually formed, this granted the two goddesses, Gaia and Chaos, the ability to reproduce, to create new life from beyond the once dark, empty void of nothingness. From Chaos, the children of the night were born, Erebus, who served as darkness, and Nyx, who represented night. After bedding his sister, the children of Erebus and Nyx had been created. Aether, the primordial embodiment of the upper skies, and Hamira, the personification of day. Eventually all but her brother would grow frightened by the terrifying powers of Nyx. In response to these fears, Nyx created her own lineage of horrors. Unveiled from the goddess of night, she spawned Moros, a hateful spirit who represents both doom and destiny. The malevolent Keres, female death spirits which personified violent deaths and destruction. The brothers Thanatos and Hypnos, who embodied death and sleep respectively. Oniros, as dreams. Momus, to represent blame. Oises, who serves as pain and distress. The nymphs of the West, otherwise known as the Hesperides, with a golden light that shone every evening at sunset. Apate, goddess of deceit. Philotes, goddess of sexual pleasure, friendship, and affection. Old Age, otherwise known as Garrus. Nemesis, who ushered in the concept of revenge. The Morai, three sisters known as the Fates, were the personifications of destiny. And lastly, Eris, goddess of strife and discord. Nyx single-handedly created many of the negative forces we know of today, perhaps as a means to embrace the fear that the world had cast upon her shoulders. Unlike Nyx, who had amassed a family of overwhelming deities, Gaia had only produced a single offspring of her own accord, and that had been the god of the starry skies, Uranus. Eventually becoming her husband, the duo of earth and sky produced many children together, though not quite as successful or mighty as those of Nyx's. The first generation of their children had been the triplet Cyclops brothers, Arges, Steropes, and Brontes. Due to their horrifying appearances, Uranus condemned them to the depths of Tartarus, and, unfortunately, this fate extended to their second batch of children, the Hecatonchires. Just as their Cyclops brothers before them, these creatures were born as three. Named Briarius, Cotus, and Gaius, they were giant, mountainous beings who sported 50 heads and 100 hands each, thus giving them the moniker Hundred-Handed Ones. Just as the deformities of the Cyclops plagued Uranus with disgust, so too had the Hecatonchires. Growing ever so frustrated by these children, Uranus and Gaia had united once more in an attempt to create new life. Powerful life that would fill Uranus with pride. From this third attempt, they had been successful as the time of the Titans would soon come throughout the Greek world and usher in the Golden Age. Hey guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video, as I intend to make this an ongoing series for the channel, one where I take popular mythology stories and summarize them into bite-sized videos. If you'd like to see more, then please be sure to subscribe, jingle bang that like button, and comment which story you'd like for me to cover next. This has been Steve Wukong, and I'll see you next time on our journey to success.